Eu convido aqueles que puderem estar de pé. I invite those who can to stand up in reverence to the word of the Lord, which is going to be read in Jeremiah, Prophet Jeremiah, book of the Prophet Jeremiah, chapter 18, Jeremiah 18, where we'll meditate on, on the word of the Lord. Jeremiah, Prophet Jeremiah, chapter 18. Does, says the word of the Lord. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was making something at the will. And the vessel that he made of clay was mared in the hand of the potter. So he made it again into another vessel, as it seemed good to the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you? As this potter, says the Lord, look as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hands, O house of Israel. Lord God, speak with us through your word tonight as we pray to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Amen. The church may be seated. My beloved, there has always been a desire from the part of the Lord, of, of God, to speak to man. All the way from the Garden of Eden, my God, every time, every day, God would come down and speak with Adam. He would say, Adam, how are you doing? Because God always was always concerned with man. Because man was a creation of God. And when God creates man, God creates man according to his image and likeness. So God will never abandon man, a living creature, a living being, a um, thinking being. A being in which we have one soul that's very important. We, we are comprised of matter, soul, and spirit. One day, this soul will, will go back to its creator. And we, who are going to determine the path that our soul will take, Because here it speaks of the clay. Then we, we were made out of clay. The word says that the clay will go back to dust. Our matter will go back to dust. Where, where it came from, from, from clay. But man's soul remains alive because whoever gives life to men we know we will know that it is the soul jesus is life but inside of us 
there is a soul. So there, we, it was always a desire of God to speak with man. And here we will see that the Lord will have, will have there a dialogue with Jeremiah. We know that Israel at that moment was going through a moment, a difficult moment, distant from the Lord. But the Lord wanted to bring uh, Israel closer to him. In the same way as the chicken gather its chicks under its wings, in the same way God always wanted to gather Israel. Uh, as even uh, uh, with is in physical Israel as well as the spiritual Israel. The Church of the Lord is the spiritual Israel. There is that Israel, which is a nation, but we have also the spiritual nation, which is the Church. So he calls Jeremiah to speak with Jeremiah. What he wanted to show to Jeremiah, what, what was the desire of the Lord towards his people. So he brings Jeremiah to him and speaks to him. Go now to the house of the potter and you go down and go there. And when you arrive there, there I will speak with you. And when Jeremiah goes down to the house of the potter, he, he notices the potter working on the wheel. So we know that in order for that vessel to be there, there was an entire process. First, the potter went out, chose the, the clay that was there out there on nature, was a clay that could had an, the proper consistency. And the potter, with all the care he could, he chooses the right clay, and he brings that clay to the location uh, fr from the place where he brought uh, where he found the clay he brought, brings the clay that was probably uh, had impurities like grass and little stones so he picks up that clay put it on his hands and then he goes there to the potter's office where he began to work on it and give shape to that clay. Before putting uh, the clay on top of the wheel on his workshop, everybody has seen a potter uh, working on clay to make a vessel. But there was first a process of purification of the clay. He, he takes out the pieces of wood, the stones. Uh, what that clay had um, acquired in nature and that may prevent, uh, may hinder the process of building the vessel. So he moves anything that that the clay came gathering with it in nature it came with uh, lots of impurities so he, he sifts it there is an entire process afterwards 
He puts the clay that has already prepared. He has already cleaned up, uh, very clean. So that he put it on top of the wheel. But in order for that clay to have the proper consistency, water is necessary. Water needs to be present in this process. In this process. Because if the water is not present, there, there will be no consistency or shape. So he, he puts enough water in the, in the appropriate quantity. So then he begins to turn the wheel. So then he puts both his hands around the clay and the wheel begins to spin and then he he begins to give shape to that clay also putting on that vessel his fingerprints that vessel will carry the fingerprints of the potter so then he begins to work work on the, the vessel and the water speaks of the Holy Spirit and he works on and begins to give shape to the clay that was previously shapeless like it was said in the beginning the earth was shapeless and empty and that's how we were without shape and empty but then the potter began to work and work and Jeremiah he was curious trying to understand what was the point of of that where God wanted to get to sometimes you want to put the horses uh, uh, put the chart ahead of the horses. You always to want to hasten things, but the things of God has their appropriate time. The Holy Spirit has its proper time. Sometimes God works on one a little faster than in others, and that's how God does. Sometimes a person entering into the church a year ago, and then they already began to be used on the spiritual gifts. And sometimes there are the people that question God, saying, I've been 10 years in church, I've never seen an angel. But calm down, the Lord will be working each one according to his own purpose. And Jeremiah was there, curious, looking at the potter. God told me to come here and there I will cause you to hear my own words. So Jeremiah paid attention and well, God told me that he was going to speak with me. So Jeremiah kept looking and you know what happened? That vessel broke on the hands of the potter. Jeremiah may have felt sad. Well, the work was not completed because the word said that his work was upon the will. So the work of the potter was upon the will. And it broke. So now, now what? Jeremiah may have asked the Lord, what now, Lord? It broke. It's over. No. So the word says, then, then the potter started once again to make, he didn't discard it, that vessel, that clay. So, okay, I'm going to throw you away. You didn't work out. I'm going to put another clay. No. 
he utilized the same same matter because the Lord wanted to speak with Jeremiah the following in spite of my people being distant they don't want to hear what I've, I've said I will still not abandon them I will not discard them we live today in a world of the disposable things well, disposable cup, disposable forks, everything is disposable. Is it possible that man is also disposable? No, for God it's not. You have your worth to God. You are a vessel on the hands of the Lord. In spite of moments in which you may go through on the hands of the potter, when you need uh, go through moments of trial and difficulties, but God will never discard your life. Never. Once I was walking, now bringing this message to a close, and a youth was coming towards me there in Vitória. He was crying. Vitória in Brazil. And then he came to me and began to talk to me and lament about his life. Oh, I'm worthless. My family members, nobody like me. Nobody agrees with anything I say. Uh, I'm a disposable individual uh, for my family. So then I said, remember that there is a person that will never discard you. And that person is Jesus. Right? The whole world may abandon you. Everyone may turn their back to you. But Jesus will never disappoint you. Seek the Lord. So that, then that young man left happy from that place, comforted because his soul needed a word like this. And in that sense, and my brethren, at the end there, the, the potter worked again on that clay. And we see that. Look at this vessel here. The vessel alone is already beautiful, but with flowers, it's much more beautiful, right? So the servant of the Lord, as a vessel in the house of the Lord, is beautiful. But he, if the vessel has the gifts, and if the servant is used, how, look how ordinated it looks. It looks. Look how the instrumentalists ordinate the church. Look how this, the praise group ordinates the church. The brother or sister that open up their mouth to praise the name of the Lord is a vessel ornating the house of the Lord, ornating the service. Must be the name of the Lord. And so at the end, God spoke to Jeremiah and said the following. Is it not possible that I will be able to do the same with Israel? Why do they resist so much? If I want to work with them, if I want to bless them, if I want peace with them, if I want them to be a blessed nation, what is the difficulty, Jeremiah? Go back and tell them this, that I am the potter and they are the vassals on my hand. Amen. Let us praise the name of the Lord.
Oh, to Jesus. There is still a, a detail in the preparation of the vessel, which is after the vessel takes shape, the potter picks up the vessel and puts it in the furnace, right? Because there, the potter, the pot, will have the resistance. The resistance of the, the vessel is takes place when it's burnt on fire. So the servant of the Lord needs to go through trials. Trials may come, and the more trials come, the greater is their strength on the Lord. Because when the trial comes, that's when he seeks the Lord more. Look, this week, this week I'm going to go to early dawn. Why? Because I'm going through a trial and I need the Lord to give me victory. I'm going to the early dawn service. Burn up my, little, my will a little bit, my own desires, right? So, so when we feel like a stale, when we are lazy in bed, but when we get up, our own ego, our own, own desires, they are burnt up. The Lord wants us to lead us to an experience with Him. The more the vessel is burnt, stronger the vessel becomes. It will not break. 
the Lord also have given a vision, vision, a spiritual vision in which each one of us who entered here, we went with a lamp also made out of clay and each one of us was inspected by the Lord to check our, our own lamps and when the angel noticed that some of them were worn out or stained the angel would pick up our lamp and would replace it and that's what the Lord is doing with us is renewing removing everything that may prevent us from being on this walk and will strengthen us amen so that's the word that the Lord has for us tonight pastor do you want glory to God All right, I'd like to invite the church to stand up we're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord I want to praise because you gave teaching to our lives I want to say that we love you with all our hearts I want to say, Lord, that every day we break us and make us into a new vessel, Lord. Make us bold in no harvest, Lord. We praise you, Lord, because you have sustained us to this day. What the God has done, everything for your people. We have not lacked anything, Lord. We praise you for your mercy. We feel embraced by you for this love, Lord. You has given to us every day but we feel once again that that you are with us we ask that you be with us have mercy we pray in the name of Jesus my God we want to praise your holy name and according to your word we ask Lord that you may work on each heart here and that you also work on our minds helping probing us, Lord, and helping us so that we are able to withstand the trials, Lord, and that in you we may overcome every trial, receive our praise, and take us home in peace, is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations and the gifts of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. My brother, I just wanted to remember, remind everyone of the wedding on uh, June 21st. It's going to be a Friday at 8.30 p.m. So I'd like to invite the brethren to get ready so that together we may be honoring the bread. That for us is a great celebration. When the, the youth, they get married on the Lord, it's a great feast for the parents and also a great feast, a greater feast to the church. I'd like to ask also to ask you to pray for the seminar we're going to have this week. We're going to have a seminar in Connecticut, Connecticut and I'd like to ask the brethren to pray so that uh, the trips for those who are traveling is blessed. Some go by car, some go by plane, so that there will be a great celebration, uh, spiritual celebration. And also to pray for our seminar in December and also for the reform of the new temple so that the Lord may open up all the doors. We need to hire an engineer, or an engineer for this, for that. I never saw so many engineers, so but that's how it needs to be engineer for the light and for plumbing engineer for outside for inside oh god of mercy but amen everything is being done i'll ask the the brand to be praying so that there is no impediment 
everything that is being asked by the city is being done. Amen. We are in this process still. The church has not forgotten. It's not lack of money. It's just it's a bureaucratic part that we it cannot run away from it. But by faith, in December, we're going to be there in our vigil. Amen. If nobody's uh, in haste here, it's going to be the last marriage in Hallandale. But unless there's somebody in a hurry. So in December, we're going to have an, an our church. Amen. And to all the peace of the Lord.